All right, so if you saw my last video, you know that I was at my parents' house helping them do their kitchen remodel. It is not finished. However, I did make this super awesome rollout pantry. Um, they just had extra space on the side of the refrigerator and they needed something to fill it because the door opens and you have to have at least some kind of gap there. And so this is what we did. I wrote out measurements on my little notepad and then from there I figured out what size boards I needed. This took about a sheet of plywood and a half. It was actually, we just bought this one here. And as you can see, I already used part of it to make the top of the other um, coffee bar from Hutch, again, from the last video. So the rest of this is used as the main portion of the entire unit. So really affordable. And then I essentially just attached everything with a pocket hole screw. Um, I did five on each shelf, top and bottom. I just wanted this thing to be secure. They're gonna be putting cans on it. You know how heavy those things get after a while. Plus she's got at least 20 grandkids that are probably gonna be swinging off the bars, so. Um, this is my super cute nephew. He was helping. Lucas was not happy when he found out that he was not the only one to help me with power tools. <laughs> so uh, that, was, that was a fun conversation with my now three year old. But yeah, so I just loaded this thing up on pocket holes along each of the shelves, and that's what I attached to the sideboards. This ended up being um, 70 inches tall plus caster height and then 30 inches wide. It, like, super simplistic. Anybody could do this. This is my very first build, and it turned out fine. I mean, it's structurally sound. I put a kit in it and slid it in, and I feel like that's how you know it's, it's secure. So this is your very first basic pocket hole jig. They have better ones. I don't do pocket holes a lot. I just do them for my um, twin bed to bench buildings. This is the first time I've ever had to use it so much. And I see why people want the larger ones. So here I actually have my mom holding these up. The cuts are 90 degrees. So I know if the board is straight up and down, it's a 90 degree and I'm fine. I did not use any clamps for this. We're professionals, if you can't tell. So this is the overall framework of it. Um, I did already put it on the casters. These are not swivel casters. We just wanted it to slide in and out without any give one way or the other. So they need to be the um, one way caster, not swivel. So then I used my paint sprayer because I was already using it on all of their cabinets. They chose to, to do this whole thing in their lower cabinet color, which is a um, gray paint, like a really soft gray. And then I decided to trim it out to match the island that they have. I ended up doing board and batten on the back side of their island, so I kind of trimmed it out to match that. So that's why it's painted. This is an afterthought. So I'm going to go through and spray these as well. And then the backer sheet is an old piece of plywood they already had lying around. It wasn't the best quality, but it was thick and so it'll help give it some more structure. So that's why we use that. You can just use regular backer board, which is much cheaper if you were buying everything new. Again, they just have this lying around. So I use that and I use the clean side on the back because that's the part that will be seen. It won't be seen at all, but when you slide it out, you could potentially see it. It will never slide out that much. But so I'm just making the cuts on the frame out pieces. These are just one by three boards, super lightweight. It's just for looks. So I'm not attaching these with glue. I'm just attaching these with a staple gun. The staples are just kind of holding it there. Again, it's just for looks, not structural integrity at all. Otherwise I would be using glue to give it a little more, I don't know, rigidity security strength doesn't need any of that it's just for prettiness i do however really love the staple gun and i don't use an air compressor i do however use all my battery powered tools and ryobi has an airstrike and i just really think that would be fun to have now not that i do any of these projects in my shop ever i just refinish furniture but it's fun building something maybe one day one day when i get the house that i'm working on saving the down payment for 
Um, as you can see, I don't use a measuring tape for any of this stuff. I literally hold up the pieces to where I need them to go. I make marks with a very fine tipped pencil. So here you can see I'm putting the backer board against it so I know how wide the back piece needs to be on there. Um, yeah, and then I just make my marks from there. I feel like measuring tapes are for the birds. Sometimes they're a necessity, but for the most part, I feel like it's easier just to line something up and make a mark on it. And that's exactly where it should be. So that works better in my brain. Also, these all turned out perfectly, so I feel like that's the way to go. So once I got all those pieces fit in, I just got my paint sprayer back out and started hitting up the boards that I missed. And then also touching up anywhere where I felt like needed some extra layers. This paint was an enamel style paint. I, I chose it because they were doing it on their cabinets and they wanted obviously durability. Um, I did not realize when I chose it that it's an eight to 12 hour uh, recoat time. So this set me back quite a bit in doing all my extra layers and everything. So I did really enjoy the paint. It laid very well. Wow, that's a bad angle on me. Um, <laughs> It laid very smoothly. Everything turned out beautifully. I would totally recommend it. Just be prepared for, I'll list it below. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. It was a Valspar. So remember how I told you the backer board was just some old plywood they had lying around? So this is why I chose to do this on the inside of the cabinet because you will totally see this. So um, I just took some kind of faux wood look paper and I decoupaged it on there. You guys know I decoupage almost everything. I just love it. It's like gilding wax for me. And then we got this three quarter inch copper pipe. They're like nine feet long. The nine feet section did this whole thing. And so we just put cut the copper pipe down to fit into the holes. I just drilled them in part way on the right side. And then on the left side, I drilled them all the way through. So I shoved the rod all the way in and it was very secure. You can glue it in if you need to. And then for the handles, we did the same thing. I just cut down the pipe. You can use a pipe cutter or you can use, um, I mean, any metal saw would work as well. So to whatever sizes, we bought the little end caps and the attachments are called copper bell holders, pulls. I just, if you type in copper bell in Home Depot, they'll pop up, same as Lowe's, but they're super awesome and they make great handles and they just look so, so good very industrial chic, I think. And copper is the color of their kitchen. So this thing's awesome. I couldn't be more pleased with this. I know this is kind of off base from what I normally do, but it was just fun to do something different that I'd never done before. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.